Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we're talking about the swinging jig. The swinging jig head, the wobble head, the biffle head, whatever you want to call it. This technique right here is my single favorite way to catch fish in the late spring and early summer. We've been talking a lot about the swinging jig head lately. It's been in a handful of videos. In fact, we named it as one of our top baits for fishing this time of year. So what's the deal? Why is this such an important bait for you to understand? Why should you be throwing it? And then more importantly, when, where, how? Today, I'm so excited that we're finally taking the time to sit down and go in depth with this. Because as I said in the intro, this is one of my, I would argue it is my single favorite way to catch them this time of year. And the reason why is that I can cover a ton of water, I can catch fish, and most importantly, I can catch giant fish. Mark my words, somewhere in late May, June, early July, every year, I catch at least one absolute monster bass on a swinging jig head. And most years I catch piles of them, but I'm telling you it's clockwork. I blast them on this technique and specifically on this color, on June bug. That is the ticket. We're gonna get into that. But to kick this thing off, I wanna talk to you guys first Let's talk about the one group of people who should just ignore this video because there is one segment where this is not for you. And if that's you, I wanna save you the time of listening to all of it and then finding that out. But if this is not you, if you are anybody else, you need to pay attention to this technique because it catches giants and it's easy to do and you can do it and you can do it right now. So the one group of people that can ignore the swing head, the biffle head, the wobble head, whatever you want to call it, is the group of people who are fishing on a fishery where the entire bottom is covered in slime. Not grass. If you have grass, we can get through that. If you've got wood, rock, sand, those are great. But if you've got that true bottom slime where any bait that you throw out just gets gooped up, and it's your entire lake, there's nowhere where you can get away from it, this is not for you. For literally everyone else, you need to understand how to do this technique. So here's the deal. It looks like it's just a, a creature bait, right? Exxon Adrenaline Craw is what that one is. I've got a handful of baits for you, a couple of sizes, handful of heads. This is the simplest technique. It looks like a creature bait, that's what it is but we're not dragging this thing on the bottom. This is somewhere between a swim bait, a spinner bait, a chatter bait, a crank bait. This is a fast moving bottom contact bait. So what I mean by that is the way we fish this, just big picture how we fish it. We throw it out, we let it hit bottom, and then we wind it back to the boat. Steady retrieve. Now here's the big trick depending on how rough your bottom is, that will determine how much you need to work the bait. And what I mean by that is this bait excels around rock. That can be big boulders, that can be chunk rock, that can be fist size rock. But if there's rock, something for it to bounce through, that is the best. If there's wood, anything that it can come in contact with hit, and then it'll start to do its thing. That's the best. The more sandy the bottom, the smoother the bottom, the more we'll implement that action ourselves. And what I mean is, if it's rocky, I throw it out, I hit the bottom, and I just wind. And my speed is whatever speed I need to stay connected to the bottom. I wanna feel it bumping. Anything down there, I wanna bang into. But if the bottom is smooth, every, five to eight handle turns, I'm going to pop that reel and that's going to cause that thing to dart and move even though there was nothing on the bottom that made it do that. And that's how I've been able to take this technique and expand it out of rock 
and do well with it in clear water, sandy situations, smooth bottoms, mud bottom, grassy bottom. Just wind that thing and just occasionally just real bump it. And that's enough that if they're following, that's when they'll pop it. But again, the concept here is that the creature is free swinging separate of the jig head. So as you're winding across the bottom, that jig head, typically a football head, there are different head shapes, but a football is my favorite. That football head will just be dragging along the bottom and then when it comes in contact with something, that trailer will kick out and it's got its own action and then of course, the tails are back there kicking too and that's critical. Through the years, I've caught a lot of fish on a wobble head with trailers that don't even kick because they just have so much action back there swinging that the fish eat them anyway. But through the years, as I've dialed the technique in, gotten better at it and gotten better at targeting the big ones, trailers that kick are key. And then also, I want trailers that are fairly compact, meaning they won't just eat the tails. If the tails are big, long tails, they tend to grab onto those tails. I want them eating this thing whole. So let's talk baits first. We're gonna talk color with that because color is so important. Then we'll talk hooks and jig heads. Then we'll talk rods and some of those things. But the baits are very, very simple. I'm gonna show you two here. These two baits are almost identical. From Zoom, we have the Z-Craw. And actually this one is the Z-Craw Junior. So the size is going to be a little different. But we've got the Z-Craw. And then from x -Zone, we've got the Adrenaline Craw. And actually, just for the sake of fun, here's the Adrenaline Craw Junior. That way they are basically the same size. Extremely similar profiles here. When I first figured this technique out, that Zoom Z-Craw, that was my bait. I caught countless fish on it, I'll bet to this day, I'll bet I still own 40 to 50 packs of just June bug in that Zoom Z Craw. But as you guys know, Tim and I love shooting underwater footage. And a few years ago, we were shooting underwater footage and we had that adrenaline craw on and we had that Zoom Z Craw on and we were mind blown, mind blown at how much movement that adrenaline craw had. And with that in mind, it completely took over. I, I have not thrown a Z-Craw in several years. That's not to say they won't catch fish. I've caught piles of fish on them and they deserve to be in this video if for that and nothing else. But today, my primary bait that I throw is that Adrenaline Craw. There's the full size and there's the junior, the little guy. The key here again is it's compact, but it's got those strong, I split the tails so that they'll kick it's got those strong kicking tails back there. And as it comes through the rocks, you're just getting that movement out of it and it, it fools those fish. It's incredible. Now, I've got a handful of more baits here for you, but before we even go there, I wanna talk color. Here's the biggest ticket. If you wanna catch a lot of fish on this technique, I recommend throwing a natural color. Green pumpkin, tilapia, uh, another one of the adrenaline craw colors they call this one 309 it's a very natural color here's a green pumpkin and a rains very natural tones okay so again green pumpkin tilapia watermelon things like that that's how you're going to catch a lot of fish if you want to go down the bank and get them that's the way you get them. And again, you can take this technique and you can just go down the shoreline, especially a rocky shoreline, but I love to find isolated cover, whether that's a rock pile, whether that's a break, tip of a point that runs out and falls off, and I'll fish right on that point. Uh, if I can find brush piles, you know, anything like that, where fish will collect, then you're really targeting them with that bait. But. If I want to catch a giant, there is no question in my mind that I need to be throwing June bug. 
I can't even get into the why. I can just tell you that this time of year, whether it's a wobble head or a shaky head, I catch all my biggest fish every single year on June bug. The only exception is if the water's crystal, like 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 feet of visibility. Then I, I start losing confidence and I go back to the natural colors. But if it's any less than 10 foot of is, no question, June bug will always get my biggest bite. It happens every year. It's just clockwork. Now in the adrenaline cross specifically, because that is my main bait, this is their June bug. You'll notice it's fairly bright. They also make a dark June bug. That's a Tackle Warehouse exclusive color. I love both of those colors. June bug and that TW dark June bug are amazing. If your water is a little bit clearer, I would lean to the dark June bug because it's not quite as bright and bold. If your water's a little more stained, I lean to just the straight up bright, bold June bug. But both are amazing, almost interchangeable, uh, just phenomenal, phenomenal colors. Now, let's talk through the rest of the baits, then we'll come back to jig heads. I wanna make sure I remember to show you how I modify these things, because that's critical. Two more baits for those full size, uh, that full size profile. One from American Baitworks, Net Bait. That is that Packa Slim four inch, and that's no surprise. This is one of my favorite chatterbait trailers. It's one of my favorite flipping baits, one of my favorite jig trailers. So no surprise I throw it on this too. But again, compact profile, great kick. Those flaps move really well. It's got great action. And then the last one, especially if you want a ton of longevity out of your bait, from Z-Man, this is the Helicross. That Helicross is an even more compact profile but the body is still large. So you can still put a four aught, even a five aught in there just barely, but you can get it. That's a five aught. And I can just squeak it into that bait. And those claws are just barely, barely hanging out there. So if they're short striking you, that is a really good option. But again, I keep it that simple. I don't throw the really, really big exaggerated plastics, you know? Uh, I used to. I used to throw a lot of like zoom brush hog type profiles on there. Uh, a lot of different creature baits and now I just don't. I stick to these craw type profiles that are very compact. And then if you want to downsize, because that can be a really good option, basically there's two that I throw. Uh, again, that adrenaline craw, but in the junior size that we've already talked about, that little junior is just a killer. I've done so much damage on that. And then the other one from Rains, this is their 3.5 inch bubbling craw. And that's a cool one. The action is a little more subtle. So the body is very small. So I can throw a small hook in this. And in a giant fish situation, that's a negative. But in a numbers situation, clear water, that's a huge bonus. I can get all the way down to like a two aught hook and I'm gonna show you how I do that. But I can throw a two aught in here, but I've still got a full profile. And these legs, they're turned on their side. I don't know if you can see that or not. They, they don't lay flat on the bottom, they lay on their short side on the bottom. And as a result, they really bump and move very, very well. But that's an awesome downsized option. And that's it for baits. I'm keeping it that simple. And that's more than I throw on a daily basis, right? On a daily basis, I've got the Adrenaline Craw, and then if I'm really in a pinch, I've got the Adrenaline Craw Junior and the Reins. Uh, and it's only if I need to adapt that I even add the other ones back in. Now, jig heads, that's everything. I already stated that I prefer a football. I think a football does the best job of hitting hard and causing the most deflection behind it. I think that's the way to go. That's how I've had all of my best success. The main heads that I throw, they come from Dirty Jigs. That's called the Pivot Point Football. And that's what I've been holding up. That's what's in this bait. And that's what you always see me catch giants on. The reason why I've latched onto this head is because it's a really good football head 
They come in black and green pumpkin. Obviously, if I'm throwing June bug, I'm throwing black, right? I want it to pair up the best. Uh, if I'm throwing those more natural tones, I throw green pumpkin. Very simple. Uh, and I, I personally, I throw it in two sizes. I use the half ounce with a four-aught hook, and I use the three-quarter ounce with a five-aught hook, okay? Let me see. Pull one out here for you. So there they are. Half ounce, four aught, three quarter ounce, five aught. That simple, those are what I use. The reason why I use this is because they're very consistent and they've got a Gamakatsu Superline EWG. And that is a hook that I have a ton of faith in. It is just very, very consistent. It gets them. When I hook a giant, this isn't like hooking a giant on a crankbait, right? You're winding that crankbait, you load up deep on a giant, you're all excited, they come up, they jump that first time, and then you're like, I've got this fish on size four treble hooks and 10 pound fluoro, please make it, please make it. This is the opposite. I crack these fish on a seven four to seven six rod, I smash them 20 pound leader to 50 or 65 pound braid, and I've got them on that super line wide gap hook. As soon as I crack them and I feel it's a big one, my brain just goes, gotcha. It, it's just over. It's so rare that I lose one. Now, I have, there have been some famous losses in our videos. Uh, you guys got to come along and watch me lose a double digit on Chickamauga on this exact set up right here once in a while somehow we still manage to lose them but it happens so rarely that it's not even in my mind my confidence when i crack them is just sky high that it's over i've got them uh, all right um, let me talk about how i modify them then i'll show you the other heads and hooks okay the one thing i noticed with this technique through the years was that sometimes I'd get bit and I wouldn't hook them. And I used to, because I would fish really thick rock, I would take my hook and I'd bury it down in that bait really good. And I would just miss some. Well, what I learned through the years, there's two things. The first trick is you leave that hook exposed. I snug it up there where it's flush, but it's still out. If I am going to skin hook it, I just skin hook the tip of the point where as soon as they touch it, that point is right there to catch. The other thing I do is if it's not a ton of cover, I take a pair of pliers and I pull that bait out of the way and I grab that EWG hook and I, I do the ultimate bad thing you should never do and I bend it out just a little. And I fish that thing exposed. And now instead of that point sitting flush or being tucked back in, it just ever so slightly is tipped up. Hookup ratio to the moon. If they eat it, they're done for. I've got them. It is brutal when I tip that hook point up. Now, anytime you open a hook point, you increase the likelihood of losing your fish. So I don't tip it out far. And I just know that when I stick those fish, I need to get them in the boat right now. I wind them, wind them, wind them, boat flip them or net them immediately. Don't mess around, especially the heavier heads. But that is my modification. That's, it's, I told you this was simple. You get yourself a June bug creature bait, you put it on a half or a three quarter. And the way I choose between half and three quarter is just what do I need to stay on bottom? If I'm fishing less than 10 foot, I'm throwing half. If I'm fishing deeper than 10, or if I'm fishing in current, I throw a three quarter. Done, it's that simple. Only exception is throwing the smaller baits really shallow. Then we'll, we'll get to that here in a second. Uh, but that's my modification. So get a creature bait, you already know my color. Start slinging that thing, done deal. Now, a couple of other heads for you. Typically for me, this is when I get around smallmouth, but it's when I get into clear water. 
If I get into clearer water where I want to throw this thing on lighter line, this one's from Exxon. It's a tungsten head. The reason why I switched to tungsten is that I can throw heavier heads and they're still smaller than the lead heads. And the hooks are lighter wire. They're lighter wire than that EWG, which allows me to go to lighter line. So if I'm in a really clear water situation, I tend to switch over to the tungsten head. Uh, and you've got a full range of sizes, right? I still throw a ton of half and three quarter. Uh, I'll also use tungsten if I'm in like Tennessee River, we get a ton of current. Sometimes I rarely, but sometimes when they're really flowing hard, I've got to go to an ounce. Uh, and the tungsten is the way that you get to that ounce without that thing just being giant. But again, the key is that lighter wire hook, which allows me to throw this on lighter lines. Suddenly I can throw it on 10 and 12 pound line instead of 14, 15, 17, 20, that heavy, heavy line. And then last but not least is these guys right here from Gamakatsu, the hybrid swing heads. Again, tungsten but this allows me to do whatever I want. And again, if I'm fishing clear water, this is cool. I do this quite a bit. One of my favorite hooks, and this is a cheap, is cheap the wrong word? Am I supposed to say inexpensive? I don't know, but seriously, these are a cheap, inexpensive hook, and they're so reliable. I love this hook. That all-purpose bait hook is not going to break the bank, comes in a full range of sizes and it's very reliable. I keep them, I have them in the bass boat, I keep them in my jet boat, I keep them in my pack for going on the kayak or walking the bank. That's just a hook that is just an all around phenomenal hook. And again, the key is that range of sizes. So when I wanna throw the little guys on lighter line, like this is a two watt all purpose. If I take this guy, put it on here, Oh, and I did it backwards, look at me, jeez. There we go. All you do, I'm gonna do that again and I'm gonna show you what I did. You just take your hook point and you thread it on and it twists around just enough that it doesn't unwind under pressure. And now I've got that two out, that two watt, and in this case, I've got it on a three quarter ounce head, but this is a phenomenal pairing for like the little reins that smaller adrenaline craw, but that little two aught, particularly for this reins, is such a good fit if you want to chase clear water fish. Let me set that up here. Right about there. That is dialed. That two aught is just the perfect size, and you're not going to find a two aught in. Uh, a lot of the swinging jig heads, but you can build your own with that Gamakatsu hybrid head and you're set. It is such a simple technique, guys. I cannot encourage you enough to give this a try. The only other thing is rods. Uh, I like, I mean, I treat this as serious power fishing. And the reason why is that every single time that I go out, I believe I'm gonna catch a monster on it. If there's a monster around, I've got an amazing shot at that fish. I mean, the same shot that I would have in the springtime throwing a monster swim bait. That's how confident I am in the really big ones saying yes to this presentation. So with that in mind, my rod is critical. Uh, for Mega Bass, the Orochi XX series, the Brailleist has been my bread and butter for years. I love that rod, it's one of my favorite jig rods. Uh, I love it for this wobble head technique as well. It's amazing. Through the years, I used to do this technique on straight fluorocarbon. <clears throat> One of the only things that I do on straight fluorocarbon. But as I've learned to dial it in, tip my points, all that stuff, I've gone back personally to throwing it on braid to leader. Typically 40 to 50 pound braid. I mean, if you have heavy braid, don't worry about it, just use it. But then I'll tie, depending on the size of the hook, my big ones, if I think I'm fishing for big fish, 20 pound. That's what I put on there. 20 pound mono, 20 pound fluoro, to 50 pound braid, and just go. A, such a sweet combo. And then again, you can send these things so far. So I throw that Orochi XX, the Brailleist, 
I'll pair that up to like a Shimano Metanium MGL and just dump that spool. I mean, I can cover so much water so quickly as I'm looking for those fish. The other rod that really jumps out from me is a rod we talk about a lot from St. Croix. St. Croix through their entire line, whether uh, the Bass X is, is your budget, if that's where you're at, or you want to go all the way up to like Legend Extreme, they make the same model in all of them, and that's the seven foot four heavy fast. I love that rod. It's an all it's such a universal power fishing rod that you can do so many things on and it still loads really deep. And that's the critical thing. That's what makes the Brailless so good. That's what makes uh, that St. Croix 7.4 Heavy Fast so good is that when you crack them, you've got all the power to hit those fish, but then it loads so deep and it just keeps them pinned. Uh, but regardless of your price range, there's a rod in there that, that will work. And then same thing, I focus on reels that will really send it. So like the Shimano MGL spools, whether you're at a SLX price point, a Corrado price point, a Metanium price point, it doesn't matter. Those MGL spools can cast so far and let you cover so much water. But I'll link the exact combos that I like, whether that's a high-end combo, a mid-price combo, a budget combo, I'll give you some favorites in the video description along with the specific baits and specific colors. Like again, that Adrenaline Craw, June Bug or Dark June Bug. But if I wanna get them, just get more numbers, Tilapia or Green Pumpkin. You know, I'll give you all that stuff in the video description to really try and help you dial this in. Because this is something we wanna see you guys do because we know it will work for you. It doesn't matter if you're in California, New York or Florida. You can blast them on this technique during this time period. Even if you got grass, you can snap that thing out of the grass. Again, the only time that it's going to stop you is if you have that nasty, thick slime that just completely coats it. That's the one thing that I have not found a way around. That's the one time where I just put this technique down. Other than that, you are good to go. Guys, I hope this helps you. I really do. I look forward to hearing the feedback from you over the coming weeks. Somebody, probably a bunch of you, are going to catch giants doing this, and we love hearing that feedback. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.